Okay, in this series, in this LE, we're going to talk about the three ways to grow any company. Down here, we're going to come here are some of the terms we're going to talk about. Force flow, acquisition, related, unrelated, policies versus execution. Really, what this is about is when we understand, and we've talked about this before, intelligence is defined as the making connections. So any company you look at, this is kind of the flow that you want to look at. So we're going to start, there's basically three ways to grow the company. One is more transactions. Oh, let me do this in... All right, well, I'll do that in red. So we'll have more transactions in red. More transactions. That's one method. That's one way of growing that company. And another, we'll kind of put this in its own little... little box here. Now on top of that we have more profit per transaction. More profit per transaction. Uh, just put this as a T. So we have more profit per transaction over here. That's in green. And then third we have We'll do this in that purplish color. An acquisition. All right. Okay, so these are our main three items. Yeah, it's, I guess, kind of a pink color. Didn't mean to come out purple. Okay, so some sort of acquisition. We're not going to talk as much about acquisition as we are more transactions and more profit per transaction. So let's uh, put this in some in some context here. We use uh, blue, which I guess we could have used blue for that uh, for our acquisition, but it's all right. We'll stay with pink. Okay, so let's say we have Jack over here. Got to move that down. All right, let's say we have Jack over here, and we'll put Jack as the provider, as the consumer, and then on the other hand, we'll have in orange, we'll have Jill. All right, now let's say that Jack uh, has a business that's... Um, Let's say he does, he's in the he has a car dealership. All right, and we'll re, and we'll put this as one representation, one transaction, both ways. And we'll say that this relationship, this is symbolic of all of the interactions, all the transactions, the transactions that Jack has. So if Jack is in the business of moving cars or selling cars, and Jill represents all of his consumers, how is Jack going to make more money with his business? Let's say that we're putting at uh, 10 cars a day, for example. How is he going to make more money with that business? So one quick, uh, without selling any more, without moving any more product, one way is for Jack to raise his price. So if we look at raising our price, and we just use our text box, but some of you guys had an issue with that, so I've still got that open. But using, I'm not sure anyone, anything's coming in there, so you guys can try and use that. But using our model here, one of these three, which basically with acquisitions, this means that they're going to have some sort of, uh, they're going to buy another company or they're going to benefit in some way of transactions outside of their standard auto transactions. So we'll come back to this. So if we're looking basically at more transactions or more profit per transaction, if he raises the price, that's going to fall under more, more profit per transaction, right? Because it's the same amount. So here, if you raise your price, that basically brings us over here to we're going to be underneath the umbrella of the uh, more profit per transaction, right? Okay, trying to make sure that this uh, this should be a little neater. It's going to be neater on your thing, right? On your on your screens. Okay, so let's raise prices. Now let's talk about how else can Jack make money. That's if he raises his price. What if he sells actually instead of ten a day, he sells twenty a day? That's going to be what? More transactions, right? So we're up here under more transactions. This, so this would be more product. If he's doing, if he's moving more product, that falls underneath our more transactions part, right? And what you're going to see is that we're really simplifying this for a few reasons. Because what this brings us to is that there's not that many options. There's, when, when you, the, more, the easier we simplify this, um, th this says product, by the way, <laughs> a little sloppy. But the more we simplify this, the easier it's going to be for those dendrites when you're looking at a company to overlay this. This whole model, by the way, is called our force flow. 
the kind of our flow chart. We use a lot of flow charts, checklists, and scripts, as you guys are. Uh, hopefully, that's uh, that's not news to you. But uh, this is kind of the the overall flow chart that you want to look at whenever we look at a company. And usually, acquisition is going to be over here. It's not going to be beneath it, but. It's not a big deal. So more transactions, more profit per transaction and acquisition. That's if he uh, sells more, if he moves more product. Now let's say that he finds a way, either his business or the lease he has, he's paying less in rent, he's paying less overhead, and um, he's found a way to reduce his expense in some, or the way he's acquiring cars, he's reduced that expense. Where is that going to fall under? Think about it for a second. What do you think? Where is that going to fall under if he reduces his expense? That's going to be under profit per transaction right so this is if you decrease expense anything you're doing to decrease your expense is going to fall under this category because ultimately if he decreases the expenses without if he decrease if he maintains the same number of transactions and decreases the expense he ends up with a higher profit and that's a result of a more profit more profit per the actual transaction now let's say that he uh, Jill has um, Jill refers more friends she's so happy with Jack's service she sends more friends over where does that fall under that would be under where is it where would that be think about it right that's gonna be right over here I saw two answers on that so I guess we're to some degree we're getting the right uh, the, our text box is working somewhat. So any referrals. Now what if Jill's so happy that she keeps coming back? She comes back every year, every two years, or every six years. And she keeps uh she keeps buying. What is that called? We usually call that the residual value of a client or a uh the residual value of a transaction. And that again is going to fall under here under uh, where more transactions. So if Jill's happy and buys more, or if she's sending more business, it's ref she's referring referrals or residual, or he moves more product to other people like Jill. He finds a better way to get in touch with his best buyers. Essentially, that's all under more transactions. And if he lowers his expense or raises his prices, that's more profit per transaction. Okay, so that really sums up the way is that any company is going to grow either more transactions more profit per transaction or an acquisition now let's look at let's do this on a uh, another uh, slide here we'll put these in more transactions here all right then we're going to do more profit per transaction here and then we'll use our pink color again or whatever it was and we'll do um acquisition okay so each of these represents its own little way of growing our company. Now, if we're looking uh, specifically, we've covered how more transactions works and more profit per transaction. Acquisition is kind of its own unique uh, situation because if we come back here to Jack and the auto business, sometimes in some of the countries that uh, some of you are in, there is government sanction or government laws where there's kind of like those perfect competitive markets where we've talked about this before, our supply and demand curve, where... Sometimes we, we can have uh, supply and demand curves that are perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. Basically, what this means is that the government maybe is uh, in, the government is uh, controlling prices, or they are not allowing certain prices to be set. There's not as much freedom within those prices. The free market is not necessarily as active or as promoted. Or in some cases, with commodity goods, where there's just government contracts and those have to be met. How would a company like that go? So let's say that Jack is by law forced to sell X amount of cars every day at this price, and even by raising it a single penny, he's in violation of some treaty or some sanction or some law, and he could be imprisoned or even killed, which uh, those are some dramatic examples, but that's happening in many of the places that you guys are in. Uh, not so much in America, but when that happens, there's still some more transactions. What if that's outlawed? What if more profit per transaction is outlawed? We still have this acquisitions. And this is where things get really interesting because this is where we introduce our B&U uh, policies. And basically, this refers to, let me write this down here, benefit and utility. So how can Jack use the same resources he has right now or maybe add in new resources and make more money. We're going to talk a lot about this. This is its whole new uh, section. But basically, if we look at Jack as far as the way Jill's, if he has X amount of Jill's, let's say he has 1,000 Jill's, 1,000 buyers of autos what or cars, what other industries or what other, what other uh, business could he enter and um, 
still have benefit and utility from those transactions. Or what if he buys an, a, a company? And basically, when we talk about acquisitions, we're going to be under two different uh, broad categories. One is going to be related, and one of them is going to be unrelated. So if Jack moves into another business, so let's say is some sort of transportation, maybe airfare or um, water travel or bicycles, it could be depending on where he's at. Different that would be something related to transportation or some something that's related to the auto industry. If he goes into something unrelated, let's say he gets involved with real estate, or let's say, and this is the big secret with a lot of companies overseas, a lot of them want to be involved with American stuff, so. You can actually work out through the different models we have where let's say Jack is doing this in China or India or Africa. He can be involved with American real estate or some other some totally different model and still benefit from those transactions. And we don't have to get a loan or do anything with this. Usually when we look at loans for business, we'll talk about this more later when we talk about financing. All they're doing basically is buying transactions. So when we acquire, this part is buying or selling or having some benefit and utility of some branch of another business. Does that make sense? So we have Jack's business over here. Let's say this is his car dealership, right? And we have, let's say, a real estate model. And we're gonna, we've are gonna we talked uh, somewhat about this, but let's say it's a real estate model, a way to buy and sell houses, and let's say we're doing three a month, and that nets, let's say, 10K a month. And Jack has, let's say, a 40% stake in that, or a license agreement or an MFM agreement where he gets a 40% stake in that. So that's four grand a month essentially that goes right to his bottom line, just through acquiring, through having another agreement or a license agreement. So this is a very powerful tool, and it's really a game changer in the rare cases where there's some sort of um, government or state sponsored or state sanctions that are um, affecting this. So the point is that when we look at this, when we look at it from this perspective, there is always we can get rid of this uh, this example. There is always going to be some way that we can apply this to our business. Makes sense? And those are some very rare examples. To start out, those are not going to be the cases we're going to be going into. But we can always acquire something related or unrela unrelated and have benefit and utility from either the current consumers that Jack's working with or a totally and completely unrelated business or model. Okay, and this also brings up the whole issue of MFM and MFMing models, and we're going to talk more about that later. The point is that either way, we can grow. If, the, if our all our options seem limited, which they never are, it's just our the way we're thinking about this. We can go through and we can acquire this. And if you guys remember the dad, our HK HQ, uh, we always can use our dialogue. In a lot of cases, for example, in some of the overseas examples we're going to go over, you can go and speak with the government and show them how it's in their best interest to not have some of these sanctions involved, and we can often get those removed. So there's a lot of the. the uh, yeah, what this comes down to is the ease of an acquisition, but it's not uh, that doesn't limit what we're doing. We don't want to limit our thinking here. We can still work with more transactions, more profit per transaction. It just may take some, some getting used to. Now here is where our assignment's going to come into play. Okay, so we understand kind of more product, residual value, residual transactions, or referred transactions, referral transactions. That's what normally comes down to more transactions. More profit, either we lower expense or raise prices, generally speaking. This is basically it. This is how this business or any business is going to grow. Now, what it comes down to as far as how quickly we want to isolate this, whenever you look at any company, I want you to consider which one of these would be the easiest or the um, the fastest way to grow that company, and which one which ones do you think would be the best way? Within acquisition, we have related or unrelated. That would be, in fact, let me add that down here. Related. That's an R. That's a U. Okay. <laughs> All right. So related and unrelated. Now, um, when we when we look at any company, this is the kind of the chart that I want you to look at, and then we're going to come down to the question we ask ourselves. With any of these items, so let's say a lot of businesses they just want to focus on, you know, more transactions. Okay, so they want to move more product. I need more sales. I need more leads or whatever. Those are generally ignorant questions because they're not very specific, and they kind of prove that there's not a familiarity with a, a grouping of ideas like there is here. So you will not be that ignorant, correct? So when we come to any item here, we have what is probably the most important. We'll do this in light green, let's say. Okay, let's say more product is our item. There's basically two questions we need to look at. Okay? Do we need to have a change in policies? Okay, that's the uh, delta. It's not necessarily the best use of that delta, but I want to save time here. Or a change in the execution. Wow, okay. 
Execution. <laughs> All right, so we either need to take, so when we're talking about any company, let's say we look at more transactions. We come down here and we look at more product. Okay, we need to move more product. What is What it's going to come down to ultimately is do we need more policies? Do we need a change in policies, better policies, or do we need better execution? Do we need to change how we're executing the current policies we have? Does that make sense? And that brings us to our final item here when we talk about... Uh, more profit and green kind of didn't uh, didn't work as well. So let me use uh, dark blue here. With any of these issues here, okay, with any of these items here that we're looking at, okay, it's ultimately going to come down to an issue of we need to get better policies or better execution. That's going to be the question that we need to determine. Now, usually it's going to be an issue of it's kind of both. They never sat down and determined the exact policies. Okay, in which case, this is something that you're going to be involved with. Which one we need to actually develop better policies, and then we need to execute those policies. Now, there's ways you can work with the company and actually develop those policies from their previous, their history. We're going to talk about that in the next uh, LE as well. But ultimately, just knowing, just looking at any company and coming down to this kind of as being the bottom line, where we know we either need to get, wrong page, in order to grow that company, we need to grow we need to either get better policies for residual uh, transactions or we need to get better at the execution. This really narrows our focus, right? Whenever you're working with a company, this gives us a very crystal clear idea of what we should focus on. Which one of these do we need to focus on? And then kind of the last question is, do we go through them or do we get outside policies? So are the policies going to come from them or are they going to come from others? And usually if they're going to come from others, we're going to involve some sort of MFM a manufactured or franchise model. That's basically it. This took me a lot longer to explain than it's going to take for you to determine, but I want to make sure we're clear on this. Okay, so again, any company we look at, really simply, we look at our our flow, our force flow, here, we, here it is. Basically, this is it. These are the three circles that I want you to keep in mind. More transactions, more profit per transaction, and acquisition. Then we look at what would be the, what, what would be kind of, what is their biggest challenge right now? Let's say it's more product. Whatever we look at, we want to come down to this. Do they need better policies or do they need better execution? And then our second question, our follow up question is, do they have the policies or would they, was there a time when they were, where they were, uh, effectively, uh, having more transactions? Was there a time when they had better residual transactions? They had better referrals? Is there a time where they lowered their expense or whatever? This is normally not what we're going to focus on too much lowering expense. Was there a time when they did have uh, price inelasticity? Was there a time within that company and that company's history where we can take that and we can policize that? Or do we need to start getting in touch with other companies to get those policies from others? So that is our assignment right now with your sample of three companies, all right? I was going to abbreviate that, but I won't. Okay, assignment. Okay, determine. First, we want to find out which one which one we're going to pick. Find more transactions, more profit per transaction. And then determine which one is it. Is it better policies or better execution? Usually, it's going to be a little bit of both, but that means we need to start with better policies. Then we want to come down to find out, are the policies from them? Look through their history in the last one year, two years, five, 10, 15 years, however long they've been around. Do we need to get those policies from them, or is it better to find the policies from others in that market, others in that area? Do we need to interview others to get those policies? Okay, so we're going to use our force flow to diagnose a company. This is our force flow diagnosis. Should have been a doctor with my handwriting, right? Our force flow diagnosis, and you want to do this with three companies or groups, okay? So that's it. And this is going to be the one thing we are always going to come back to whenever we talk about growing a company. This is our flow chart. This is what I want you to think of. This is how we're going to come about determining how to grow that company. Just by knowing this, you become a lot more intelligent because intelligence is a matter of categorizing, classifying, and being able to relate and uh, gather information real quickly. And that's what you're doing. You're categorizing that information, you're connecting it, and you're classifying what their challenges are. Any challenge any company has always is going to come down to their better. they need better policies or they need to get better at their execution regarding whatever we're talking about, whether it's more transactions or more profit or some sort of acquisition. And with acquisitions, by the way, related or unrelated, there's the same thing there. They need better policies. We're going to talk about this in depth because 
because it's such a beautiful way to grow companies. Okay, that all makes sense, right? We're clear on our assignment. Very good. What the hell was that? Okay, we're clear on our assignment, and we're good. Let's get that in place, and we will talk soon.